Hi everyone, welcome back to Lair Academy. It's Mickey again, and in this video, I want to talk about events and listeners within Laravel. An event in Laravel is something that happens such as a user login, user logout, even a database query ran against the database, events fire, and we are able to use listeners to subscribe to those events in order to do certain things or certain actions. For this example here, I have a semi-default Laravel 5.6 project. I've run PHP Arison make auth and I've added one field to my database. The requirement that's come down from for this project is we need to record the last login time a user has logged in. This may be a simple requirement to you, but our IT department says, I want to know when the last person logged in. So if they're at 90 days, we can send them an email saying, if you don't log in within the next 10 business days, then you're going to lose access to that application. So what we're going to do first is just quickly check out the events and documentation here on Laravel.com. You can see if we were to scroll through here, you may find a couple events um, just kind of through the documentation, but there's nowhere in here that will actually tell you all the different events that exist. What we should actually go to is the API documentation. And I have this page open right here, and I'll have this URL in the description as well. But you can see we have the namespaces for Laravel 5.6. In these namespaces, basically anything that ends with events is gonna be throwing events inside Laravel. The other way we can do it is just do a search on this page and look for events. You can see that we'll have a whole bunch of different event classes show up here. Now for this project, we need to record when the user logs in. So we want to make sure we grab the events that are located in the authorization. So we'll click on this namespace here. And you can see that we have five different events that are thrown. We have attempting, failed, lockout, login, and log in, sorry, log out. So what we want to do is we want to listen for the login event. So there's a couple things that we're going to need to do to set this up. First, let's create or generate a listener. To do that, we will use our terminal. In here, we'll say PHP artisan make listener, and let's give this listener a name of user event subscriber. And once that listener has been created, if we switch over to our IDE inside our app folder, we'll have a new folder called listeners. And inside that we'll have our user event subscriber class. Down here at the bottom, we'll have a handle function that accepts an event. And this event is going to be, it all depends on what you're listening to. For example, we're going to be listening to the user login. So the event is going to have access to that current user. For now, let's just do a log into the Laravel log file. So we can say logger, we'll just use a print R just to get it in there and make sure it returns a string. Now, even though we've done this, we're still not telling Laravel to listen to that event. If I come over here and I run my tail program, so I go to storage logs Laravel, you can see I have a couple different errors here, but if I go over and I go back to my website, I refresh just to make sure there's no errors, and I try and log in, you can see that my file didn't change. There's nothing new there. So the logger isn't actually logging anything. And that's because we haven't told Laravel to actually listen to the login event. So let me log out and switch back to the IDE. Inside the providers folder, we have an event service provider. In here, you can see we have a little bit of a stubbed out listener, and this is what we want to change. This is how we subscribe to certain events and tell those events to uh, fire different listeners. So the event that we want to subscribe to, if we switch back to our API, is illuminate auth events and then login. So let's make sure we copy that, and up here we'll say illuminate auth events slash login. And now what listener or listeners do we want to run? Well, we're going to run this event subscriber listener. So I'll just copy the class. We're an app listeners and then event subscriber listener. Now, if we save this and we go back to our site, let's make sure that we refresh so there's no errors. Now let's try and log in. We'll put in our username and password and you can see that we've now logged in. But if we go and we check out that tail file, you can see right here, we've actually uh, we have a whole bunch of different stuff. This is the user class that's coming off of the event. 
So what this means is we can easily update the user's object, the last login date to the current time. So let's actually exit out of this and let's run PHP artisan tinker just so we can look at that current user. We'll say app user first, just so we can show kind of what's in there. So right now the last login is at null. If we switch back to our IDE and we go to the user event subscriber, we know that inside this event, we have access to that user. So we could say event last login at equals carbon now. And then we want to make sure that we import carbon or else we'll have a couple errors. So we'll say use carbon slash carbon. And now that we, we have this, we're actually missing one. The event, let's access the user off of the event. Now the thing that we're going to have to do is tell that user record to be saved. Now with that done, we can come back to our page. Let's actually log out. And now let's log back in. And if we type in our password, you can see that we log in just fine. But if we go over to our console and we grab that first record again, you can see that the last login at time has been updated. So what this means is no matter where the user logs in, as long as that event is thrown, our listener is going to pick up on that login event and it's automatically going to run this code for us. So this actually opens up a whole bunch of different possibilities. For example, if we go back to the API and we do another search for events, one of the ones that we quickly talked about is the database events. Let's pretend we actually need it to record all of the queries that go to the database. Well, you can see in the events here, we have the connection. We also have every single time a query is executed. We have the transaction begin, commit, and roll back. So with this event right here, we should be able to store that information um, and we could store it offsite or wherever we need to, but it just, it gives us the possibility of doing these things. Now, just remember to check out all these different events and you can hook them up into your application. At this point, I think I'll end the tutorial here. I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe. And if you really like my work, you could show me some love on Patreon. I've included the URL in the video and the address below. Once again, thanks for watching.